Hello everyone, Dr. Hasbullah here and in this video, we are going to be looking at an example of how we can reduce a seemingly complicated problems into a very simple problems by manipulating the Navier-Stokes equation. As I told you before that the Navier-Stokes equation is quite a complex equation that is usually handled by a computer in order to solve it. However, as human, we are perfectly capable of determining which terms can be cancelled out and which term has values. And if we can do this properly, if we can determine which term is zero, which term is not zero, then our calculation later will be much quicker. Now, let's say that you have a rectangular channel, okay, and the channel looks something like this, right? And you have a fluid that is flowing inside this channel. And if I look from the side, this is what the fluid looks like. And if I look from the top, the fluid looks something like this. Okay, this is the velocity profile of the fluid. Now, let's say that this is x direction and this is y direction and that is z direction. And let's say that the streamlines of the fluid is always parallel to the x direction. Okay, so flow is parallel to x direction. It means that this flow only has the velocity in x direction. It does not have the y velocity. It does not have the z velocity. It means that between u, v, and w, v and w is zero. Okay, and the question is asking you to simplify the x component of Navier-Stokes equation. So how do we go about solving this equation? First of all, let's take a look at what is Navier-Stokes equation. So Navier-Stokes equation looks something like this. So I think you can imagine what the x component looks like. Okay. So for x component, x direction, so this is rho du over dt equal to minus del p over del x plus rho gx plus this will be mu and then del square u over del x square plus del square u over del y square plus del square u over del z square. Now our job is to find which terms are zero and which terms are not zero. But first of all, I think we need the continuity equation. So continuity equation in compressible flow. So let's assume that the flow is compressible because we need the flow to be compressible in order to use the Navier-Stokes equation. So the continuity equation for compressible flow is del u over del x plus del v over del y plus del w over del z and this is equal to zero. And we know that u is not zero, but v and w is equal to zero because it says here that flow is only parallel to x direction. So if you have v0 and w0, there's no way that velocity can change in y direction and also in z direction. It means that this is equal to 0, which eventually means that del u over del x equal to 0. And the reason why we are doing this is because when this term is 0, of course, this term is also 0. 0 square is 0. Next, what happens to our rho gx? I don't think there is any gravity force in x direction, isn't it? So why don't we just cancel that out? If this is in z direction, probably we can consider gravity, but not in x direction. So this term, del p over del x, I think definitely will have value because the flow is moving. You need pressure to move the flow. So naturally, pressure exists. And finally, we are left with this term. So let's expand this term and I'm going to do it down here du over dt is actually del u over del t plus u del u over del x plus v del u over del y plus w del u over del z. And we know that v and w is zero, so these terms are zero. And also, 
du over dx is zero. So this term is also zero. So what about this term, del u over del t? So if the flow is steady, then del u over del t is zero. And if the flow is not steady, then you have a value for del u over del t. And I think I forgot to mention here that the flow is actually steady. So immediately we know that del u over del t is zero, which means that this term on the left hand side is completely zeroed out. And therefore we are left with only a few equations. So this is minus del p over del x, mu del square u over del y square and mu del square u over del z square. Let's write that out. Okay, so del p over del x is equal to mu del square u over del y square plus del square u over del z square. And let's take a look at what the question wants. Simplify x component of Navier-Stokes equation. And I believe we have achieved that. And this is the simplified version of the Navier-Stokes equation according to the problem that is given to us. This means that if we use this equation and plug this into a computer, it will be much quicker to solve rather than when you plug everything into the computer. Okay, so that is the importance of being able to know which terms are zero and which terms has values. Okay guys, that is all from me for now. Push hard and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.